as an Oakland educator, I know that our students deserve better, um, and the district has to step up and take care of their employees and take care of their students and their families. Is it true the superintendent makes $480,000 a year? That's absolutely true. If you look it up, it's easy to find, and that's nowhere near what uh, any of our teachers make. If you want to see our other banner over here, the math teachers actually did the math and added up what it would take to um, how many teacher salaries it would take to pay Kyla one salary. So, yeah, a lot of money. Valeria Coronado and I have I'm one nurse and I have three different school sites so I'm responsible for approximately 1,350 students that is not safe that is not equitable uh, my caseload is over so we are here fighting for smaller caseloads we want one nurse to one school what happened in the last contract I understand that nurses did not get a good deal yeah so we couldn't get a good deal OUSD told us that we do not need more nurses. How is that possible? We need more nurses. We need better pay so that we can keep students safe. We have students with health conditions. The number statistically has increased. We have more students. Where we are um, getting agencies to come out and help us. We need more nurses. We need more paraprofessionals. They need to get paid better so that they can stay in Oakland and not leave. How does it feel when you really can't take care of the students who need your help? It feels extremely frustrating because these students deserve to feel safe, to have their medication given at the right time, their procedures being performed, the nurses being um, understaffed, overmanaged. We don't, um, teachers, staff, when a nurse isn't there, they have to pick up the work. They're not trained to do what nurses can do. So it's very frustrating for um, staff to help the nurses with basic first aid. And the superintendent makes $480,000 a year. How much does a nurse make? A nurse, I am a new school nurse, first year at OUSD, and I started with education, um, $78,000 a year. That is, I can't make a living off of that. Thankfully, I'm married, I have a double income, but if I was single, I could not afford to live. I have to drive an hour just to come here to OUSD because I live elsewhere. Make, I have trouble getting nurses because the nurses at Kaiser, other hospitals. Exactly. So at Kaiser, at, at other healthcare systems, they are making at least 80 to 90, maybe even 100,000 salary compared to school nurses. It is not fair. And to be a school nurse, you have to have a bachelor's degree. You have to go back to school to get credentialed. OUSD should pay the school nurses for the education that they have to go back to and complete. Um, all I have to say is they're paying over 30 million to office and supervisors when they're cutting staff, they're not fixing our schools, and they're cutting more and more special education classrooms. What does it mean when they're cutting special education? They're closing, they're closing special day classes. They're closing, they closed my special day class last year. They're closing another one at our site this year. And Joaquin Miller is closing special day classes too. So they're taking services away from special education students. Isn't that illegal? Aren't these students required to get this? Uh... They're entitled to their services. I don't know what's happening. I need to hear a reason. <laughs> Yeah. They're violating the law as far as these students. I, I, mean, that's I mean, I don't know about that. I just know that they're cutting, they're cutting classes and taking away services from community schools. All I know is that they're taking services away from kids. They're taking teachers away from kids. So they can't keep, uh, they can't keep the teachers here because of. This. Yeah, a lot of our teachers are leaving every year. We have a high turnover rate at our schools. What's the turnover in your school? I don't have the numbers, but we are, we can see it in the staff. There's always new teachers, always young teachers coming in. Not a bad thing, but we want to keep our teachers long term as well. You have this high turnover, does that affect education? Oh yeah, the students, I even talked to the students, they're like, growing up, uh, were your teachers young or old? And like, oh, they're young. And then I was like, okay, so did some of them leave? Like, yeah, we still, like, we had a sub the whole year for multiple years, so 
They see it all the time. It hurts the education process. It definitely hurts the education process, yeah. It's unfortunate, but we're fighting for a better contract so we can keep our teachers. So in Los Angeles, the teachers there went out around the same issues. Uh, it seems like it's a growing movement of teachers and educators throughout California. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it should be. Um, so many educators have left after distance learning and after the pandemic. The needs are much higher, and uh, we work really hard. All the teachers you see out here today are working with youth every single day, one-on-one -on -one attention, everything that you would want for your children. And um, you know, the cost of living is going up, and we need to keep up and pay our teachers. And at our site, yeah, we're hemorrhaging teachers. And a lot of teachers in Oakland specifically live here, and they'll go to other districts to work um, because the pay is higher. I could get paid a lot more if I went to San Francisco or San Leandro over to Marin County. Um, so I think we need to improve our salaries. What say about this country? California is a wealthy state. Yeah. You got all these billionaires. Yeah. And yet you can't have decent paid teachers, decent public education in Oakland. I mean, I think we know what it means. <laughs> I think we know, but um, yeah, there's more than enough money in the Bay Area. Of course, it's privatized. <laughs> Des Retainer. We're fighting for our students, we're fighting for proper education, proper pay, proper counselor to student ratio. We're fighting for it all. It seems like it's getting worse, the conditions in the schools. Is that oh, true? Absolutely. Absolutely, it's getting worse. I mean, the workload. The workload is just, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. How can you have proper education, Ooh, a good education? I want to talk to somebody else. <laughs> when, when you got stressed out and too many, not enough staff? Oh, not enough time. So that we know, like, there's a lot of teachers that stressed out. There's a lot of, that's why teachers are leaving the profession. I mean, the pay for the stress, it doesn't work. Like the kids say, the math ain't math. How long have you been teaching? Uh, 19, 20 years. Do uh, you like it? I love my job. I really do. I love my job. Oh, man, I'm excited to be here. I do have a sad story to tell. And, and this is a story we probably all know. It's as a teacher. I asked my students this week, I said, I asked them a simple question. Would you, if you had children, would you send your children to an OUSD school? 100% of my students said no. And then I asked them again, are you sure? And the response was, hell no. They would not send their kids to the school that they actually attend. Not to our school, not to any school within the district. And I thought this was sad. It, it saddened me to actually have to go through that, to ask them this. And so I challenged them, what can we do? And they were happy to know that we're coming out here today to try to do something about it. My students were happy they were there this morning. Uh, we didn't have 100% because middle schoolers will be middle schoolers and they will stay home uh, to take advantage of that free day. Uh, but we're out here working. It's not a free day. Most of us are losing just to be here. Uh, they've already promised us no pay. They've already said everything they would do to those who support us and they use these tactics to instill fear. People, um, when you take someone full of fear and you back them against the wall, there's only one way to react. I feel we're being pushed against the wall and this is our time to react. This is our time to put on our teacher voices and let them know that we're not gonna take it. We are tired of this, we're tired of being underpaid, we're tired of every single thing it is that they do. We're tired of coming to the negotiating table and they're not being there. We're tired of them canceling, we're tired of looking at numbers like three and a half percent. It's like OUSD, what the hell is wrong with you? Right? What is wrong with you? Three and a half percent. They sent out, yes. They sent out letters two nights ago to all the parents. My child is an OUSD student. And we got letters that made me nauseous saying that they were giving us an 8% increase. They never talked about the extra four days a year they're trying to make us work. They never talked about the two extra hours a week they're trying to make us work for that extra four and a half percent. They painted a narrative. It's our turn to change the narrative. We have the kids, we have the students, we are the ones most responsible for their education. And we are not getting compensated for what we do.
And I think it's time we turn around. It's time we do something. I told the children, we are making history right now. We want to make this a place where people say, you know what? When I grow up, I wouldn't mind teaching at OUSD. I wouldn't mind becoming a teacher. I want to be that person. We came here for a reason, okay? And we're fighting every single day to make sure that this happens, all right? And I'm glad to see you here. I love you all as fellow educators. I appreciate what you guys do. My kids appreciate it. And we're here to work and fight the long ass fight that we got ahead of us. If anyone's not willing to do that, hey, go home and join the rest of the people. Okay, but we're here for a reason and we're not gonna let Oakland stay the way it is. Thank you. Everybody, uh, shout out to my Frick family that is here today. Um, we wanna make sure that folks know who is here, who is in this house, and we have middle schools strongly represented, so I wanna shout that out. Uh, I also wanna shout out our counselors who are here. We have all three of our wonderful, amazing counselors here, and I'm sure y'all at your schools have them out here too. Um, we don't just need more competitive pay for teachers, we need more resources for our schools. That includes more counseling. That includes better health services for our students. OUSD talks a lot about how uh, today is a disruption to stability for our kids, and it is. We can agree to that, but we also know that stability means schools that are here to stay. It means teachers that are able to come every day and stay in OUSD. We need fewer vacancies, we need less turnover so that we have stability for our students. Um, and we need no school closures. Frank went through a merger. We know what that feels like. We, stability means no school closures. It means competitive pay. It means allowing us to stay and get the resources that we need for our students and for our staff. So thank you all for being out here today. Oh, all you beautiful people out here today. And thank you so much for coming out. Uh, I first want to touch on, you know, kind of the what, what this really re represents, which is a much more of a bottom-up strategy. Okay? Uh, we heard, we've heard recently that the school board has been flipped. And, you know, maybe that's true. But from the recent votes, we see that just because we flipped the school board and now they allegedly represent public education, uh, they are still tied to the Democratic Party, and the Democratic Party is who controls the politics in this state. And that's why we see so much attacks to our public school system with school closures and charter uh, co-location. I work at Sojourner Truth. King Estates is the campus that we are located at. We are all online now. It's all a Zoom school. TK to 12, uh, the entire school is on Zoom and Google Classroom. Uh, but my brothers and sisters from Rusdale and Rusdale Newcomer are out today and shout out to them. Thank you so much for being out here. What they've had to go through this year on their campus, nobody should have to go to. This is what happens when the district refuses to staff our schools with the proper level of staffing. Again, they had a very violent event up at that site this year. And the fact that they are still here, standing in solidarity for themselves and our students and our families is very, very important. So shout out to them and shout out to everybody else that came out. I want to also, the last point is that this ridiculous line that everything's about compensation. Magic, compensation is not a magic bullet that's going to keep teachers in Oakland, that's going to keep families in Oakland. If you're not going to commit to providing nurses, counselors, therapists at our site, teachers are still going to leave, especially in the Flatland schools where the uh, level of support staff is horrifically low. Um, well, I don't really want to take up any more of this precious time that we have today. Uh, again, I really appreciate everyone for coming out. I'm a member of the Rank and File Caucus. Anybody who's interested in learning more about that caucus and is interested in this kind of a bottom-up strategy, uh, hit us up. We have a blog, rankandfilecaucus.wordpress.com. Look out for our newsletter, and otherwise, enjoy your Friday. Shout out to our brothers and sisters in L.A. who are on a three-day strike. Let's go. It's Oakland Tech year!
members of the 2800 OEA that are out here today. This is 70% of the middle and high schools that could be on strike are out today. And obviously not all of them are here because we know OUSD is a vindictive district and so a lot of untenured teachers have not felt comfortable, but we represent a wave of teacher, staff, student, and family energy that is ready for change. And we know that a lot of the elementary schools who could not be out here today are in solidarity. So we are strong. We are very strong here. With that said, we would like to pass it off. We're going to get started with a, a little rally here. Then we're going to march up to 1000 Broadway and then have a little rally there. Um, for our first speaker, Divya Farias, representing for Oakland High School. And what we're doing today is so powerful, not just because it's us out here, but because we're here. We didn't wait. We're not going to wait around for a contract. We're not going to wait for the negotiations. We're ready to go. We're out here. This is a wildcat action. Let's hear it for ourselves. This is OUSD's worst nightmare, and it's only going to get worse for them. Because we're here united, it's not just teachers out here. We have classified out here. We have students. We have parents. And it's just going to get more. Our solidarity is just going to grow, and we're going to continue to organize, despite the district wanting to divide us. They went low. They went low enough to suggest that our raise would be dependent on cuts to classified. What do we have to say to that? No. We say hell no to that. Hell no. We say hell no. We need our classified staff. The school doesn't run without classified. We need our custodians. We need our paraeducators. We need our teachers. We need everybody in the school. We need our RJ facilitators. And that's why we're here united together. And that's why we're willing to take a wildcat action. Right? We're here because we know we're all members of our unions as well and we're ready to push our unions until we get what we need for ourselves, for our students, and for our community. That's right, that's right, cheer for yourself. Yeah. So what do we say to 3.5%? What do we say to 10%? What do we say to 15%? What do we say to 22.97%? because that's just going to take us to the median, right? So we're going to get there. We're going to keep going because this is what we need for our students. We're done with school closures. What do we say to mergers? No! What do we say to turning two schools into one and squeezing all the staff for two schools into one school? We say no! We say no to cuts. We say no to closures. And we're going to be here until we get what we need for our students. I'm going to say one more thing. This is the people who are willing to stand up, right? We're ready to push forward. We're ready to do what it takes to get that contract. Uh, so if you can go to bit.ly slash wildcat poll, and we'll walk around with QR codes too. Let's show each other what are we willing to fight for? What is the minimum that we, that we need that we will come out here for until we get that? So it's bit.ly slash wildcat poll, and let's show them we mean it. One more time. Let's hear it for ourselves. Union power standing strong and mighty. I've always been in a union. I was an SEIU officer, UOS officer. Now I'm here fighting for my grandson, who has an IEP, who was mandated to have a meeting in September, and no one was present. So when there's no one there to help my grandson, then I have to come out, and I got to show out. I got to go out and I got to get an attorney to make the district do what they know is required. Since 2008, when we got out of receivership, we've been going downhill ever since. We have an administration and we have a board that does not care how much you're getting paid because they got their money. And when they take, when they want to give you a, do, a, a, a bone and tell you to be satisfied with that, what is the, the teacher administrator ratio in Oakland? I know it's far more administrators making the bucks than it is you. I want you to be able to be able to sleep at night and not worry about your bills so you can get your study plan together so you can help my grandson. I'm tired of the cuts in the classrooms because what's happening is when you take away that support staff, now you are the one that's doing the job of a special ed aide that's supposed to be there to support that child. 
And when that child is, has an, an incident, because we have an inclusion program, we want everybody, all our students to be there. But now when you have to stop to help that child, what happens to the rest of the classroom? I'm tired of share proper education. I'm sick of it. I want my kid to be able to say, it's still telling me, Nana, what's happening with this world? Why can't we get the help? Why do we have to get an attorney? And I have to tell them because they don't care. Because you're not their child. Their child is probably somewhere on the hills or private school or charter school, which is a private school. I'm tired of the contracting out that continues to happen because you're bringing in people that are just here for a check. They don't care about our kids. They don't care about my baby. But every day, I'm going to fight. I'm going to stand there with you and behind you because you're taking care of our children. And we need you to be strong. You, we need you to know that you're being fairly represented. And yeah, they've been playing this game about they don't have no money all along, but then always at the end of the year after negotiations is over, oh, we found five, six, seventeen million dollars. It's there. It's there. So after today, when you march down there to 1000 Broadway, give them hell. And if you need me to come out, at a school board more, at a meeting and raise more hell, I'm gonna get some more parents with me because your struggle is my, our struggle. We're united in this fight. Thank you. Next, we have a lot of solidarity. One other person that is showing solidarity is the Longshore folks. We went on strike last year with them against the takeover of public land and they were in solidarity with us against the school closures of public schools. And we know that we need solidarity across this city and across this country, from LA to the Bay, as we heard, but we also got from the port to the schools. I would like to introduce Gennaro. My name is Gennaro Baltrip. I'm a rank and file member of ILW Local 10. I just wanted to say there's a saying that we say, an injury to one is an injury to all. And that's a true statement, because right now we're going through local negotiations and international negotiations with our contract. And you guys are going through your contract also. And right now, we're being trying to be injured by our employers and people that are um, against us right now. And we are trying to negotiate at the same time. And I just want to say, an injury to one is an injury to all. And if y'all can repeat out to me, an injury to one is an injury to all. And not disrespect you teachers, because without y'all, we couldn't be nowhere.
that the OUSD has been trying to um, put at risk are librarians. How many of you actually have a paid librarian at your school full time? I think the only people here are UFSA and, and Life Academy have a full time librarian. Maybe there's one more. But it's really interesting at a time when some of the most reactionary states are cleansing libraries of controversial literature. OUSD is cleansing our school system of librarians. It pretty much amounts to the same thing. Take the books off the shelves or close the libraries because you don't have somebody to staff them. So the next speaker I am very proud to present is Sam Solomon, who is a librarian. and I'm 50% of the teacher librarians in OUSD. And I am the only one working in a secondary setting and I am so lucky to work with amazing staff and kids at UFSA, where are you? Hey, at Life Academy. But I shouldn't have to be lucky. I shouldn't have to be lucky and my kids shouldn't have to be lucky in every district all around us. Students in secondary schools have teacher librarians to help them with research, to help them understand information literacy and important to help them build that love of reading. Do our students deserve the same things as kids in San Francisco? Yeah. Do they deserve the same as kids in Berkeley? Do they deserve the same as kids in Walnut Creek? That's right. That's why we're out here. We're not just fighting for better pay, we're fighting for better learning conditions for every kid in our district. Are you ready to fight for them? Right. My name is Michael Fonte, and I'm a special education teacher at Life Academy. This is my seventh year with the district. I get up at four in the morning, I take Amtrak from Sacramento to Oakland every single day, and I'm ready to do the work that I need to do. But OUSD can't manage to do the one thing we have, give us a real proposal. I don't want to be here, you don't want to be here, but we're here nonetheless. I have an infinite amount of things that I could be doing right now. We all have an infinite amount of things that we could be doing. I would rather be providing services to my students, how to read, how to write, how to succeed as independent individuals. One of the biggest pillars of my classroom is self-advocacy. So what kind of teacher would I be if I didn't practice what I do? But everyone here has one thing in common that brings us together. We have the ability to see the future. To look into the future is not a special gift. We have all seen the future before. We've seen it when qualified teachers leave our school. We have seen it when our most vulnerable students are on an ever-growing wait list to receive invaluable services because there's no one to test them. We started five years ago when we were right here doing the same thing we're doing right now, fighting for scraps. I don't want to be here. We are now in a future where students outlast teachers. I'm the longest serving special educator in our school history. Seven years, that's it. How many of us have seen extraordinary teachers leave us for better prospects? How much money is the district sinking into retention efforts when the answer is right in their face? Pay us what we're worth. This is not a business. This is education. We understand that there are bottom lines and money is needed to fund our most vital program. But we are not naive. We know how things work. When we don't see money where money is promised, you better believe we're going to start asking questions. Questions like, where's the 15% that special education services should be getting every year? Where's the money for black student reparations? Why do I have to take time out of my working day to dispose of dead mice in a classroom full of young students? I don't want to be here. I want, to, I want for a minute to look at the symbol of our community, at Oak Street. We paint this picture of roots that grow deep and are widespread, of people who have grown up here and who have stayed to serve the community that they do. My question is this. How are we supposed to grow roots into soil that is sour and unforgiving? Education, teachers, families, students, these are the roots of our community. The wellspring of knowledge and hope for our future flows from these. But if you salt the earth in favor of short-lived profits, then our tree is going to die. The very symbol of our community will wither and rot, and all you'll be left with is an empty building and padded walls. We shouldn't have to be here, but we're here nonetheless. Go forth and fear no darkness. Yeah! Hello, everybody! I want to start by saying happy Women's History Month! 
My name is Maurice Andre Sanchez. Make Sanchez to my students and coach to my cheer team. Many of you know me as one of the educators that went on hunger strike. I identify as they, not he, so please don't get it twisted. I know we make mistakes. And I'm here to recruit you! <laughs> Oakland educator workers stand in solidarity with our union siblings in Los Angeles because today, today we raise the bar in education. And raising the bar means the same old, same old is not good enough anymore. If we do what we've done, we're going to keep getting what we've gotten again and again and again. We are better than that. Oakland is better than that. Our children deserve better than that. And I say our children because when we are at our best, we function as co-parents to these kids. It truly takes a village. Raising the bar in education means that we pursue good pedagogy through a well-rounded education that includes, embraces, and integrates the arts. And we reject a school experience that is narrowed to only what we can test. Raising the bar also means boldly improving learning and working conditions. It means transformational shifts in how we invest in and provide mental health support to go from a reactive school district model that's centered in crisis and deception to a proactive model that focuses on literacy, arts, and students' overall well-being. The federal government through the Secretary of Education increased support for full-service community schools from $30 million to $150 million. These funds provide critical wraparound services for students in our local communities. Whose communities? Our That's right. The National Community Schools model was appropriated from right here in Oakland. That was a moment when we raised the bar. However, this isn't a moment. This is a movement. We need to continue to improve how and why our community schools function and let the community decide how these community funds are spent. This is especially important to me as a member of this year's bargaining team for the common good. We are fighting for protections for community schools, from future threats of closures, mergers, or otherwise consolidations, because we say nothing for us without us. Nothing for us without us. That's right. So the answer to this next question is a fair contract. What do we want? When do we want it? Now. What do we want? When do we want it? Now. Yes, now. That is what we want. But I ask you, what do we need? We need a collective will to fight complacency and the status quo in education. We need, if we really are going to overhaul this system, it's going to take every single one of us. Some of us have to be willing to make some sacrifices of safety, security, and just being vulnerable. All you have to do is show up. Be late. Be scared. Be a mess. Be confused. You'll figure it out as you go. I did, and I'm here. Here I am. Uh, we need the schools that aren't here to stand with us as we continue to fight for truly joyful, safe, and racially just schools where everyone thrives and equity is centered in all decision making. We have the will to fight as been demonstrated here today. Our time is now, and to borrow from my auntie, Maxi Waters, uh, we are reclaiming our time. So the last thing that I'm going to leave you all on is that the people in HR are saying that our sibling unions are not with us and that they don't support us. 
I'm here to let you know that that's a boss tactic of divide and conquer. Right, right. And we see right through that. Yeah. We stand in unity. We are stronger together. So I have a call in to the following unions. OEA, SEIU, AFSCME, and UAOS. We need to remind those in HR to tap into their humanity, tap into their courage, and tap into that Oakland Black Panther spirit! So it doesn't matter if you're a tiger, if you're a warrior eagle, or if you're a titan. We're all